are, are going to talk about design systems. Um, I'm Mayank. Uh, and I'm Arnab. And, and we are designers at Cubal. Now, Cubal is a, is a big data in the cloud enterprise company. Um, you know, so we do a lot of work for um, some of our biggest customers, including Adobe and Swiggy and Ola, uh, that many of you guys would know about. Um, and as designers, like most of you, like we were sweating about uh, you know, delivering the, the best quality products, uh, you know, sweating about every pixel, sweating about all the elements that we were designing. And um, you know, that's when uh, you know, we realized we needed a superhero, someone to come save us from, from all these uh, you know, problems that we were having. The other thing where we are still small, but we are growing exponentially. Um, we were hiring people. Uh, our team was growing. Um, we were not geolocated, so we had teams in India and teams in US. So there was a lot of collaboration going on. And so the idea of the superhero was essentially you know, someone who can come, uh, come in and help us collaborate better and innovate faster. Um, and that was a robust design system. So today, uh, we are going to put you in the shoes of, of a movie director, uh, you know, because designing a design system is almost like shooting a superhero movie. So, uh, so get ready for that. And uh, let's start directing our, our design system. All right, so first thing first, uh, when actually someone gets started with design systems, the person would go over internet. The n number of things about it, and uh, you probably get confused or get overwhelmed about what exactly design system is. And that's what you asked, so what is a design system? There would be n number of quotes written about design system, what exactly it is. There would be n number of perception about design system. So one of these quotes are from Moosley, uh, that, that's a Moosley publication. Um, design system is essentially our collection of rules, constraints, and principles where they wanted to tell you that, okay, it's basically these pillars or these functions that needs to be there to build up a design system. But no, that's not exactly what it is, right? It can be anything. Like right now, when you are over internet, basically you know you need it, uh, you know you want it, and everyone is building it. So it's like, yeah, even we want to do it. We have a problem, but it's not defined. So right now for you, the hero or the story around the hero is pretty much mysterious. So that's why we call him a mysterious hero right now, right? All of these that are written over there, a design system can be a visual language, pattern library, brand guideline, you know, voice and tone, design language, and style guide. None of these are like wrong. All of these can be a design system. Uh, so here's a great example of how, uh, you know, MailChimp has a design system just about voice and tone. I mean, imagine the whole company has its, uh, has its standardization around voice and tone, like how a marketing guy would come and you know look at these documentation around how to write a document uh, for external facing stuff or internal facing stuff. The product management team, uh, the engineering team, as well as the product design team, right? They all are looking into this uh, design system for to write things or you know writing errors or things like that, right? Yeah, so this is one of the famous material design guidelines, right? Where they have actually written. Uh, about how you need to go through the UI elements and stuff like that, right? How you get an end-to-end -end process of building a UI, right? So that's what they are talking about. If you see both of the you know, examples, they are actually a design system, but the purpose are totally different, right? Basically, you need really, really good bad guys, right? So you need to have, or you need to know who are the villains out there uh, for you to solve, or the design system that needs to solve those uh, problems. So in our case, there were three, uh, you know, uh, villains with us. First was inconsistency. I mean, being a designer or a developer, you have your own mode of doing things, right? You ship um, some other other way, and there would be inconsistency in terms of small small things like curves or you know, uh, how the button look like in another page and uh, in a different page altogether. So you know, developers have their own mode. They, they might even do something out from what you have actually shipped to them, right? The second one is, is inefficiencies. I mean, these are the conversations that were uh, happening earlier when, when we didn't have the you know, uh, design system altogether, right? Where the designers and the developers were actually building the same thing. We, we didn't want that. I mean, that's, that's like uh, you know, wasting your cost. Uh, I mean, the time that is going through and these kind of inefficiencies uh, we wanted to get rid of, right? 
So the third one was collaboration. I mean, from the first day itself, the vision of our design system was to actually bring, build up a design language where the developer and the designers are speaking the same language. Even the product managers are using uh, these uh, design system to come up with sketches and stuff like that. So also collaboration, why? Because as uh, Mayank said, that uh, our, our offices are in US and India and, and, the, and the design team has been you know, divided over there. Uh, so we needed a robust system where uh, the, both the areas of designers need not to think about the pixels again and uh, work upon by just plug and play. Right? So yeah, now you have the villains. It's time to characterize your hero. Right. So, um, so you know who are the bad guys. And, and these bad guys might be different for each one of you. Right? So for us, those were the three main ones. Um, and once we, we knew the bad guys, it was time to define our superhero's power, right? So our superhero here is called Space. Uh, that's what our design system is called. And, and his main power is to turn mundane tasks into a delight for our customers. And, and once we had those uh, you know, superhero abilities defined, uh, it was time to find the right producers. And, and producers are, are no one but people with uh, budget, people with authority, and people with need. Now, people with budget and authority are, are folks like your head of products or your head of engineering, your engineering managers um, who'd come and, and you know, dedicate certain resources uh, to come and work with you um, on the design side and, and help this uh, design system um, into a reality. Uh, people with need are essentially people like us, designers, um, as well as some uh, you know, developers who would be writing code on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, so uh, turns out like it's really easy um, for to convince people with need, like like designers and developers, they are al already on board. For people with budget and authority, you need to show them actual data, because um, otherwise they'll always be like, hey, you know, why are we working on things that that's not customer facing? Uh, mm -hmm. We'd ship things, and um, you know, we'd uh, probably take longer time to ship things, and this is not going to work. Uh, but this is a great example of what happens when, uh, you know, once you introduce a design system. Um, as you can see at the bottom here, you know, once, once the design system comes in, the number of read writes, um, as, as well as the files that are read and, um, you know, and written by each developer, that, is, uh, that goes down drastically. That all means that you know, there's a lot of efficiency that comes in the whole process uh, once you have a design system. This also means that there's far faster go to market uh, once uh, you, know, you introduce a design system. Now, um, the, the other part uh, of this is actually a big number. So you can actually calculate the amount of money that you would save a year um, based on some of those efficiency numbers, right? So in this particular case, uh, you know, uh, a company with six teams who have like 11 deliverables a year uh, could save uh, you know, uh, close to a half a million dollars a year uh, just by, by creating a design system. Um, and, and this particular number is, is something you know, which you can use to justify the whole project itself because your design system would, would pay for itself. So, uh, so now you have your producers on, on boarded. Right? Like, you know, these are, if these don't convince your producers, I think it would take more time uh, for them to understand what design systems are for. Uh, and once, you, once you're at that phase, you, know, you, you need to realize that design systems are ever evolving. Um, you know, they, you'll start growing the design system and that will lead, uh, lead to, you know, decline in inconsistencies and faster growth. So, um, so now you, you have your producers on board uh, and it's time to actually get started. So how do you get started? Go put on a pilot show. I mean, it might, uh, you know, what happens is like with pilot shows, you're basically, you know, showing them what exactly a design system would look like um, and, uh, you know, uh, how uh, the other team members need to envision about design systems. N not just the designers, but also the people who are part of it. So we went on to, you know, redesigning, uh, like this was also the point where we realized, you know, there, there would be like a couple of components and actually Cube will need a major redesign at that point of time. So we thought design si doing a design system is the right time right now. All right, so we went on to, you know, pick up uh, the, the major pages of the, uh, uh, of the product and went on to redesigning those things, right? Uh, so this is the uh, this is the one which uh, this is the first first image that we got out from. So so you know these are like very very uh, uh, like simple design tokens that you can take out from whatever the redesigns that you have done and put it out there, right? Things like what you, the the biggest thing that you can take out of is that the number of hex codes that you have over there, which is like predefined, and that's all you need. 
that's exactly what you need, right? I have seen our code uh, where there were thousands of hex codes which were like really, really random. I mean, why do you need uh, 10 to 20 hex codes just for a shade of gray? So that's what was happening, right? These, these were the things that we wanted to tackle with. So um, on the meantime, I was also you know, experimenting with a couple of iconography that we can do and uh, the illustration style we can pick up. And we just, what we did is just to you know, paste out in a, in, a, in a basic way and just throw them out there. You know what, this is how a design system would evolve. The first things first is actually you know, um, when you are doing a project and since the design is uh, on, a, on a basis of product management or you know uh, engineering it needs to have a metric to solve right uh, you need to hit a metric because it's it's really important to to see if this is actually went successful or not so what we did is we sat down with the pillars of product development cycle right who are the pillars over there so for us it was product management team the product design team and the engineering team right so you need to have the perspective of all of these, like right from engineering point of view, uh, from the product design point of view, and the product management point of view, and come up with the metrics. So these are like a couple of metrics that we came up with, and these are some common metrics that you can go and hit upon. Obviously, you can you know go and define a lot of other things, but yeah. So let's see over here, right? Time saved per feature. I mean, imagine your buttons and you know the fundamental atoms are already built, right? You don't need, you and the, uh, while you were actually shipping it, you have already done your QA. You don't have to go back and see all of these things that whether these are functioned properly or not. Eventually, what happens is you see a delivery increase at that point of time, and obviously these fundamentals are already uh, solved, so you see a lot of bugs reduction. The main point of design system is to also have a coherent experience altogether, right? All the pages, all of the things need to look equal. Right, so the, us uh, the usability metrics also improve at that point of time, and way better experience comes to the user, the end user. Yeah, so it's uh, th it, this is the point where you actually start directing things, right? Uh, yeah. So, um, so, so you've defined your your criteria, you've defined your metrics on how you'd measure a design system. Uh, so now it's it's time to actually get your hands dirty, start building the components itself. Uh, so how do you get started? Well, uh, the first thing you do is is create an interface inventory. Um, so you you look into your product, um, you blow up uh, the product, and and you uh, you know break them into small pieces, small pieces that make sense uh, that together form. Uh, your entire product, and and then you make a list of these items. Uh, you make sure that you're also capturing your different states. Um, so, for example, uh, for a button, uh, it could be you know the active state, the disabled state, hovers, clicks, and so on and so forth. And and you start uh, thinking about them. Uh, once you have made your inventory list, you need to start adding some characters, right? So um, so these characters, um, you know, you can derive from a mood boarding exercise. Uh, mood boarding uh, exercise in our particular case was something that we did to understand what does Cubal stand for and what does the Cubal brand stand for. And um, so through these mood voting exercises, we picked one, one of them and, and derived three main things. Uh, now the three main things were the color palettes. Obviously, we, we did a little bit of it during the pilot phase. Um, but, but through the mood voting, we actually uh, you know, you know, made some fine changes to that particular palette uh, and started with our primary and secondary colors. Um, the other thing uh, was, uh, so so yeah so here are our primary and secondary colors. We also define what our text font and text colors would look like. Uh, the next thing was you know again fine tune the typography, right? So typography means not just the font family, uh, in our case which was Helvetica New, but also you know font scale, font weights, and, and those kind of things. Um, and, and so we did uh, we did all of that, and uh, you know through that uh, um, the. Uh, we came to understand what a paragraph would look like and what a header would look like and what a header on a you know a dark contrast would look like. So we defined those and um, you know we then looked into iconography. In our particular case, uh, you know our website was a desktop. Our product is desktop, so we picked an icon style that that is suitable to that. Uh, you know if you are doing a mobile site, your icons would differ. Uh, so once you have these characters, you start building up your components. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that your components should talk to each other. And, and not only that, but you know, think about atomic design principles, right? So, so you start off with the, with the smallest of uh, particles, which are called atoms. Um, so in this particular case, you can see you know, your text field is one, 
atom and your you know, search icon is another uh, atom. As you start combining these two together, you form things like molecules, right? So, so now your, uh, you know, your search icon and your, your text field has come together and it has formed a molecule, which is your search bar. Um, then you start combining your molecules together to form organisms. Um, organisms are essentially you know, uh, a construct where relative tasks come together. So this was a sidebar in our particular case and, and that's an organism. And, and when you combine organisms together, um, you know, you form templates. When you are at this point of stage, um, you know, you've already defined your page, uh, right? So this is uh, giving you a good indication of what your page would look like. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and there's also a chance over here to fine tune uh, your organisms and atoms a little bit at this point. Um, so, th so these are like some of the, the atoms that, that we have in our design system. So you, as you can see, you know, we have tabs and we have tabs with icons and so on and so forth. Um, and then we have our organisms which is made up of these um, you know, basic uh, atoms. Uh, one thing um, to keep in mind while designing the uh, atoms itself, um, organism itself is it should be replicatable. So it's uh, available. Uh, it's something that, that's uh, you know, used across pages and not just in one page because otherwise you'll end up with a lot of organisms. Right, so, so that's now you've created a design, uh, your library, you have created your movie, now it's time to ship it. All right, so yeah, this is the actual time where you and your users are actually interacting with your uh, design system, right? So it needs to be available on a very top-notch way, right? As in, it has to be really, really redefined. It, it has to be like properly defined in a way that everyone can consume it, right? So in our case, uh, the tools were Sketch, Zeppelin, and documentation that we, uh, the documentation that we have. Go ahead. So yeah, you can see uh, this is our Sketch library, and uh, the purpose of the Sketch library at that point of time, and from the initial basis, what we thought is these should be like pre-configured, uh, you know, components or symbols in Sketch so that on a very literal sense, you're actually not playing with the pixels. So indeed, uh, it was never sweating on pixels again, right? So we went on to define it in a, in a, in a very granular level. We, we tried that the only thing that the designer needs to do is just to go and configure those things. That's it. That's, how, that's that level of automations that we were looking for. And another interesting thing uh, that we did was, you know, we used Zeppelin as a core uh, governance body in the product, uh, uh, you know, product development lifecycle, where the developers actually come here, and this is this is how exactly the governance body looks like. Because design system is nothing but a governance body at the core of your product building process, right? So what we did is basically gave them a pet name, uh, like give them a pet name uh, in terms of the the design tokens that we had, like the color palette and uh, and the textiles, right? Uh, so yeah, I mean, here's a great example, right? Where the, the, the developer came over here for a CSS code over there. So what he did is basically just selected that and there's this, uh, you know, the, the pet name that we have already given. So the purpose of the design system is to have less conversation on these small things. So things like this, uh, uh, this way is basically what we are trying to solve. I mean, then you, you can see the text was selected and there's this, you know, like font, medium, regular, 14 pixels. That's the variable which is also defined in the code, right? Uh, so we use something called a SAS or a CSS processor uh, to compile all of this and create variables in CSS itself. Uh, so yeah, and now finally the documentation. I know this is the part where we <laughs> actually lack upon and don't want to do it, but that's the heart of the design system, right? Because you don't want to have a lot of conversation around why why do you want to do this, uh, uh, how exactly this is going to implement and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, for us, write as much as possible because if it's not written, it doesn't exist, right? Uh, things like, uh, imagine a developer is coming and asking you what's the reason of having a notification system with that styling and stuff like that. I mean. You don't want to have a conversation like that. I mean, we, this is the point of time where we want to innovate, iterate faster. For that, we need a design system, and you you need to write a reason uh, why you do that. So document as much as possible, where to use it, how to use it, and stuff like that. And that's what your design system website is meant for. And one important thing, right? This is the most important thing, is because this is the okay. Uh, one second. Uh, this is the only time when you're doing the design system, you're not going back and doing it again. So accessibility. Accessibility can be in any way. 
I mean, there are n number of examples that you can see uh, over internet. But these are one of these, right? Well, there was this one button. Uh, you can see that's the darkest shade, and uh, you know we what we did is that the color contrast wasn't working fine. So there are a couple of guidelines like WCAG guidelines and stuff like that where you can at least hit double standards for colors and stuff like that, right? Yeah. So that's how our uh, you know uh, a design website looks like, and uh, that's how our repo is maintained by the, our developers, and yeah, uh, I think that's the hero, right? So thank you, and. Here's the closing notes by <laughs> Mike. No, so um, you know, hopefully we were able to give you enough uh, on a high level and how do you go about building your design system. 